Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, a free site. DigitalAssetLife.com, a free site. Today is Sunday, January 23rd, 2022. Now, just to give viewers, especially new viewers, some background, understand I'm coming off of a plane crash sports betting day yesterday where I have the two one seeds, the Green Bay Packers and the Tennessee Titans, only to lose both games, right? Congratulations to Joe Burrow, heroic performance, uh, withstood nine sacks. Uh, let me also congratulate 49er special teams and Debo Samuel's very crucial first down late in that game. Okay, fine. Still standing. And of course, we're in the middle of uh, some turbulence, some volatility in the crypto market. And like many of you, I do own my share of cryptos, right? So, of course, you know, let's just say the month of January has been turbulent, at least the last few days. Let's just talk about the state of the world for a bit. You know, Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos, two of the world's richest men, lost billions of dollars this week. Billions, right? Tech stocks are down. Stocks are down. I own some stocks. I own some tech stocks. Um, Peloton, down big. Netflix, down big. Right? You know, I have many friends, you know the political climate, who are always talking about the wealthy. Right? They're always claiming that the wealthy have too much power. The wealthy get all the breaks. They're always talking about how they want the wealthy to face a wealth tax. To that I say, no risk, no reward. If investors are risking these kind of losses, and again, Jeff Bezos has lost billions this week. If investors are risking these kind of losses while you've accepted the safety of a salary, don't lament or complain when the ball bounces their way and they're making big gains. Now the Buffett indicator which is the ratio of the total U.S. stock market valuation to GDP is off the charts. As I make this video, it's over 200%. It's more than 50% above the historical average. It suggests that the stock market is wildly overvalued. Right now, understand, the market has taken a beating, as has cryptocurrency. You have, and this is one man's opinion here, supply chain problems and scarcity. Right When you go to your supermarket and you look on shelves, you're noticing a few empty shelves, aren't you? And all of this is hidden by fake government inflation numbers and fake government unemployment numbers. Now let's get outside of crypto for a second. There still are some investments I like. I want people to understand that there isn't a stock market. Rather, there's a market of stocks. In flush times and in lean times certain groups of stocks are going to prosper. Now in this heavy debt, and I mean heavy debt, environment, I like physical gold. I like some gold miners. I like physical silver. I like some silver miners. I'll name one. First Majestic. Right? I own some First Majestic. You should assume here that when I name a play, 
I either own it or I'm planning on owning it. Right? I love copper. Freeport MacMoran. The symbol is FCX. I need for people to understand that electric vehicles which are quickly becoming the lay of the land which already in terms of maintenance costs are matching the maintenance costs of internal combustion engine cars right in other words the maintenance costs of EVs have dropped tremendously and they're gonna continue dropping because EVs have fewer moving parts than internal combustion engines so if you believe in electric vehicles given that everyone's getting into the space right Tesla's already there you have Lucid Motors uh, Neo uh, Volkswagen everyone's flocking to the space it's very difficult to figure out right now which companies are going to survive and which are not it's very hard to figure out exactly which technologies are efficient are Tesla cars really self-driving right you have outfits who have technology but aren't even producing the car right Google for example with its Waymo division many people consider Waymo to be far more advanced than Tesla's self-driving system you also have a race for battery technology right we're hearing a lot about Lucid's battery technology versus the idea of swapping out a battery when your battery runs low and you're on a long-distance trip they have subscription models right now for exactly that in China obviously the space requires some research you don't have to be Einstein though to profit I don't need to know which car manufacturer is going to prevail in the marketplace I don't need to know with certainty which LiDAR system is going to prevail in the marketplace what I do need to know is that EVs require something like four times the amount of copper of internal combustion engine cars once you know that and once you realize that there's a finite supply of copper I'm not saying the stock to flow equals gold what I'm saying though is it's tough finding and developing copper right so in this world you understand that since copper can't scale as quickly as demand you're looking at price moves up Freeport McMoran is perfectly positioned. If you want copper miners, consider COPEX. COPX, view this video as just an introduction, an invitation for you to do your own research, to look up these stocks on Google Finance, Yahoo Finance, the finance forum of your choice. Right? Understand too. I myself believe eventually we're going to get to, you know, EV dominance, right? I believe that fossil fuels will be de-emphasized. But understand, we're a far way away from that. People still need to drive. They might not have an EV. They might not have a charging station near where they live. Right? Having an EV might be inconvenient. People are still going to need combustion engine cars for the next few years at a minimum. Parts of the market are robust. I would encourage people to just look at the used car market right now. If you bought a used car, let's say three years ago, there is a distinct possibility, even after you've driven it for three years, that it might be worth more today on the market than what you paid for it three years ago. 
I like Exxon. I think we're looking at an era where gas prices are rising. I'm in Northern California, folks. My gas station here is charging more than five bucks a gallon for premium. Right? Already, a barrel of oil is over $80 a barrel. So I want to hedge the play because I know I'm going to need gas. I have a couple of cars, gas cars. I'm going to need gas in the coming months. I'm going to hedge my future per, uh, purchases by buying some Exxon. The idea is that if gas continues to increase in price, I need an equity that's going to increase in price along with it. Right? So, I like Exxon. You heard me earlier mention Lucid Motors. I would encourage people to research that company. They right now have a vehicle that won Motor Trend's Car of the Year. Let me also point out that, of course, I'm big on crypto. So, there's some companies in the cryptoverse. Riot Blockchain comes to mind, right? MicroStrategy, which is collecting crypto. They're different companies that are related to crypto that have huge upside. Galaxy Digital, right? People are bemoaning the fact that hedge funds control Web3, right? That the funding for a lot of these projects is going through the venture capital community, right? And that ownership is concentrated. Now, those are valid concerns, right? They are. You know something's wrong when Solana can take their blockchain down when there's a problem, then put it back up. That's more centralization than a decentralized guy like me likes. Of course, I own some Solana. I'm there for the profits. I don't have to completely be convinced in the story, right? But let me just say... You can actually own some of the diversified venture capitalist firms that are actually investing in this nascent technology. So I need for you to look up Michael Novogratz, his background. Look up his company, Galaxy Digital. In the United States, it trades over the counter. Right, just understand they have their hands in a lot of the cryptoverse. They're involved in investing in early crypto technology. Let me also say too, and I know this is going to get a lot of frowns. I know it's not politically correct. It's not what we want to hear. We want to think that all of these tech companies are overvalued that they're just gonna fail that we're living in a big bubble but I need to have people consider cloud computing in general folks it's growing by leaps and bounds if you're a Netflix user you are benefiting from Amazon Web Services Understand all of this streaming explosion, the streaming's coming from some place. It's coming from Amazon Web Services. Microsoft's also big in the space. Google has something like 9% of the market. I like those plays. Right? Jeff Bezos has built quite the company, hasn't he? Don't focus on the retail part of the company. We know that's a Goliath. Focus on the other parts of the company. Amazon Web Services is growing by leaps and bounds, folks. Just think about your own life. If you're a customer who's increasingly using streaming, using remote storage, using websites that are using cloud services, then you understand 
that the cloud services sector, cloud computing, is growing by more than 15% a year. And of course, when you look at a company like Google, who I mentioned earlier in this video, as owning Waymo, right? Let me be more precise. Alphabet, the parent company, right? When you realize what Alphabet is doing, that the search business is spectacular, but that they're actually involved not just in search, not just in cloud computing, but in autonomous vehicles. When you realize that investing in Alphabet gives you some of the most quickly growing markets available to investors, all in one company, then I believe you understand where your money should be. Right? So I like Microsoft. Right? Of course, Microsoft recently bought Activision. Microsoft is going to make a big push into the metaverse. Right? Google, of course, is getting involved in gift cards in which you could deposit cryptocurrency. Folks, Google is now into crypto. Let's not sleep on the fact that Amazon is into electric vehicles. I believe they own a share of Rivian or some company like that. Right? I'll agree. Big companies can't grow as quickly as startups. But at the same time, you understand that if Waymo ever gets spun off, you're looking at incredible value. You understand we're segueing into a digital world. Google, by the way, has an excellent competitor to Zoom called Google Meet. Right now, I'm a Zoom subscriber. I also use Microsoft Teams, right? Microsoft has a player in the space. If you're using remote meeting services, if you understand that going forward, in-person meetings might actually start to take a back seat to remote meetings. On college campuses, they might give the kids an option of either showing up in the classroom to hear the teacher or showing up virtually. Right? Lord knows when I was in college, some of my classes were on the other side of campus early in the morning. It would have been spectacular if the technology existed back then to just log on and to actually be in class. Right? Hell, you're paying tuition, aren't you? be in class without having to go to class. In the short term, of course, Zoom took off. It blossomed. If you believe in that market, you should believe in Microsoft, Microsoft Teams, Google, Google Meet. Right, folks, they're in the space. Let's talk about crypto. Let me just say, and I'm a crypto old timer, right? I have some videos up here on YouTube from a few years ago, right? I was in Dash before Dash was called Dash, right? Let me just say this. Um, one of the biggest innovations of the blockchain is proof of work. Right, folks? I don't know how we got away from that. Everyone is touting proof of stake coins, right? Proof of history coins. That's supposed to be the big tech.
right? Proof of stake, you only have a few validators, right? Just a few. You understand that the more centralization you have, the greater the risk of corruption, the greater the risk of error. I believe users should want an ecosystem, a mining community that's separate and distinct from the users, right? The mining community should be doing what they do to make their own profits. Just having the mining community leads to far greater decentralization. Now we've had a lot of folklore and misinformation, right? Competitors have a vested interest in saying, hey, mining kills the economy, excuse me, kills the environment, right? Mining's a bad thing. Suddenly the idea of using cheap electricity has been perverted. Right, I can tell you around me right now, I have a TV that's off screen, I have a printer that's off screen, I have a lot of things that use electricity. Most of the people watching this video do. Right, understand the most virtuous use of electricity would be having a currency that leads to financial self-sovereignty. So, here's where I believe crypto's going. Bitcoin, right? For me, there's Bitcoin and then there's everything else, right? That's a simplification. We know that there's certain other proof of work coins, Cardina, uh, Dash, right, which is a hybrid, but Dash and a few others, right? There are proof of work setups. Where I believe we're going is toward the proof of work side of the ledger, obviating the arguments against proof of work. So the biggest argument right now is that these proof of stake coins, let's name a few, right? Solana, Avalanche, right? These um, proof of stake coins, Ethereum, soon, are faster, have a higher transactional capacity, right? That's the argument that Bitcoin takes too long to process. You do understand that with the Lightning Network, Bitcoin now can match the transactional speed for all practical purposes of proof of stake coins. You understand that. You understand too that while Solana can just take down their blockchain, then put it back up, you understand that that doesn't happen with Bitcoin because Bitcoin's too decentralized. There is no Bitcoin office where you can go to shut down the Bitcoin blockchain. You understand that if these governments that are bent on keeping power over all of the finances in their region, right? China, Russia, let's name two, right? If these countries that have a problem with crypto decide to shut down Solana, Avalanche, they'd have a hell of an easier time doing so than if they ever tried to shut down Bitcoin. Well, just to understand, and I'm not, you know, I don't have an investment prohibition against investing in proof of stake coins, right? I own my own group of them, right? Like many of you do. Going back to NEO, by the way, when this was a new concept, but understand, you're going to lose something 
monumental if you lose decentralization. So right now, Jack Dorsey, who's a Bitcoin maximalist, uh, the former CEO of Twitter who owns a spectacular company, Square, I think they've changed their name to Block or something like that. Right, Jack Dorsey is taking on Mark Andreessen of Andreessen Horowitz. Right, uh, full disclosure, I have a virtual office in Palo Alto, not too far from my understanding of where um, Andreessen Horowitz is located. Well, let me just say, and I'm not against, I'm certainly not against venture capitalist firms, hedge funds coming into the space and buying up huge amounts of any crypto. Right, but just understand, Jack Dorsey, insider, he's concerned about the fact that these venture capitalists are literally buying up the majority of some of these cryptocurrencies. Right, you had Chamath on a podcast laughing about his commitment to Solana, a crypto he owned a lot of. Right, and on the podcast were other big time investors, right? Whales, we call them in the parlance. Talking about how they, you know, got some early access to invest in some of these cryptos and how, you know, once the lockup period expires, they're probably going to leave, which is going to lead to a lot of volatility for that crypto, right? Folks, you don't have that with Bitcoin. Okay, I want people to understand that the idea that proof of stake is more efficient than Bitcoin's proof of work might be a short term phenomenon. Right? As we get to roll ups, as we get to the Lightning Network transaction batching, I suspect that proof of work is going to match the performance of proof of stake. I'm one of those people who's disappointed that Ethereum, and I own some Ethereum, is moving away from proof of work to proof of stake. For me, that's a step down. So let me just say, with regard to cryptocurrency, right, I operate a Substack page, Substack magazine, online magazine, where you can find out my crypto picks. Um, out of deference to allegiance to my paid subscribers, I'm not going to discuss them with any specificity here. Right? Let me also point out, too, that you can join that Substack site for free. It's dwire70905.substack.com. Right again, Dwyer, D W Y E R, 70905.substack.com. But understand the premium articles that are limited to the paid subscribers are really where I offer the picks that I think can make you a lot of money. What I want people to do, just to give an overview, is to understand some of the themes that govern those picks. What we're calling right now the metaverse is a huge opportunity in crypto. Right? Some of these coins aren't in the first 100 of market caps in the space. Right? But you understand that because of the role they play in the metaverse, they have huge upside. Right, certainly Microsoft figured that out when it paid billions and billions and billions of dollars for Activision. Also, you want coins with real world usage. Let me return to a coin that I mentioned earlier. I've owned it for years. I believe it's undervalued right now. I'm not quite sure what the reason is. And that's Dash. What I want people to do is to compare the daily usage of Dash, the volume. You can find it on CoinMarketCap.com. Compare the daily volume of Dash's usage. 
with that of some of the coins ranked ahead of it in terms of market cap. You're going to be astonished. Right Dash, even this week, was clearing tens of millions of dollars more in daily usage than most of the coins around it. Understand the way cryptocurrency works and there's a certain stickiness to it. A merchant decides, okay, I'm going to offer goods in Dash, which allows, by the way, lightning fast on-chain transactions. You don't have to worry about lightning network wallet compatibility or anything like this. This is on-chain. Right? A merchant decides, okay, I'm going to offer things in Dash. The customers who go to the store see that and they decide they're going to pay in Dash. Because, of course, Dash, limited supply, just like Bitcoin, right, in countries with very high inflation rates, whatever the government does to try to hide the numbers. Once the customers start using Dash and start keying on Dash prices, right? They have an awareness for the prices of things in Dash. And once you get a Dash economy going, you're not going to be able to show up at the last moment and convince them to switch to Avalanche. Right? Or to switch to Solana. Right? That's just not going to happen quickly. We'll understand Dash usage in places like Venezuela is entrenched. Understand, too, a lot of what's spreading like wildfire in the cryptoverse, the idea of DAOs, right? Autonomous organizations that have some level of governance over the coin's projects originated with Dash. Because Dash, of course, has one of the best governance groups in all of crypto. So, of course, if you were in Miami, you saw a lot of taxi cabs with Dash advertising on it. But understand, Dash didn't abandon proof of work. Dash is a hybrid. Dash has proof of work. They also have a proof of stake element to enable Dash master notes. Right? So, what I want to just say here is when you're looking at a crypto, you want to see how it is used in the real world. Is it used in real world commerce? Right? Dash, by the way, is expanding into Africa. Look at the demographics of Africa. Folks, that is a huge market. Right? Using crypto is much more efficient than using fiat. Well, just understand that real-world usage matters. The size of the community, total value locked, matters a great deal. I would encourage people to go to DeFiLama.com. Take a look at the coins there. Again, it's DeFiLama.com. You'll be surprised by the total values of some of the coins that I hardly ever mentioned. Right? Also, you want a coin with a moat. Someone the other day came to me and we were talking about, in terms of exchanges, Coinbase. Now, Coinbase, hey, for many, that's the first exchange you ever heard of. Right? Coinbase has the big name. There's no question about it. Right? Coinbase has been around longer than some of these exchanges. And because crypto is still relatively new, people are assured by the idea that their exchange has been around for a while. There's not going to be the exchange equivalent of what's known as a rug pull, where suddenly you hear that the crypto you had on the exchanges is gone. The exchange is gone. Right? Okay. Fine. I get it. I believe years ago I was 
I invested, uh, I had some coins, I was foolish. Right, you know, not your keys, not your coins. I had some coins on an exchange, I think it was called Moolah, and they vanished on me. Right, shame on me, hit my knuckles. Right, what I want people to understand is that Coinbase doesn't have an inherent advantage over many of the other exchanges that exist out there. Right? Do some research. Just to understand there's a whole world out there. Right? You understand that the Miami Heat now play in an arena that has a crypto sponsor. Right? You understand that one of the big Dallas Maverick advertisers is a crypto company. You understand that there are some coins that have huge upside that are associated with exchanges that have been around for years and that are using the coins to give customers lower prices on the exchange that are not named Coinbase. Right? So, understand that this week, with its price turbulence, is just another week. The hodling experience is really like ri riding a roller coaster. Right? It's traumatic right now because people thought with the stock to flow model that crypto, at least Bitcoin, would be above $100,000 right now. Right? I get it. What you need to realize in looking at the stock to flow model is there are going to be times when the actual market is out of step with that stock to flow model and then of course the market will catch back up in the future once information becomes more widely known. So right now you've had the stock market tanking. People are trying to figure out whether we're about to have inflation or deflation in the intermediate term obviously short term it's an inflationary environment right but people are trying to figure out too does the Fed actually have enough power to raise interest rates three or four times this coming year and you understand that if they raise interest rates then leveraged markets the housing market for example are gonna start popping the bond market is going to start popping because who's going to want to get 2% on a 10-year if the prevailing interest rate is 5%, right? A number which sounds preposterous right now, <laughs> but which is what historically it, it normally would be around, right? So just to understand, right now, investors are linking the crypto market the cryptoverse, the prices of cryptocurrencies, to stock prices. You and I know that Bitcoin is a different animal. Bitcoin is going to delink because the circumstances that govern Bitcoin are completely different than those that govern fiat currency. Right? Fiat currency is growing in size. It's being printed by centralized banks, right? Just to understand, and I understand fractional reserve banking and stuff, and I, I realize that fiat currency is also created by banks making loans and things like that. That's fine, but that's not remotely as decentralized as Bitcoin. Right, the supply of fiat currency can't be determined over time, doesn't have the constant number that Bitcoin has. You understand. So over time, Bitcoin is going to delink from fiat. Over time, people are going to start looking at the price
prices of things in terms of Bitcoin because that'll be more constant right so just to understand markets evolve right now is a bit of an illusion right customers are just figuring out the differences of Bitcoin people don't even realize the big difference between proof of work and proof of stake the markets undervaluing proof of work right now right and people right now are just equating crypto they're just equating Bitcoin with having another asset right they don't realize that Bitcoin is something completely different put differently as I made this video more dollars were being created. Bitcoin stayed constant throughout this video in terms of the total supply that'll ever be created. Right? When I started this video, the total possible supply of Bitcoin that could be created was 21 million. Folks, at the end of this video, it's still going to be 21 million. I can't say the same for fiat currency. Anyway, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments. They could be critical comments. I know many people disagree with me. Uh, Lord knows. I've heard from my share of uh, fiat people, uh, one of my best friends in life, um, you know, acted like I had cancer when I told him that I was investing in Bitcoin a few years ago. Uh, the next few times I saw him, he would always say, um, Rich, get out of Bitcoin. That's a scam and stuff like that. Even though the guy barely knew what a Bitcoin was. I know there's a lot of resistance out there. Just understand, even with this week of volatility, I'm as bullish on Bitcoin as I've ever been. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.